Let's record. So yeah, so there was a guy there that was that was suffering from bipolar. And Jeff shared his testimony and Papa Ron went over there and started praying for him and next thing you know, Ron was calling me over there to help hold this guy up. He just got Holy Spirit came down and wave. crushed that and then he was Ron was holding his back and he said, You got something going on with your back, don't you? He was like, Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was just, I was holding him like this to keep him from fall, falling, and his back just got real hot. And he was like, yeah, I've had, a, I've had a back problem for since I was a little boy. And he said, well, God's healing that right now. He didn't even, wow. like, we didn't even pray for his back. Like, you just feel God working like it started getting hot. And, uh, of course, I got his phone number. He wants to, he's getting out soon. His name was Chance. Oh. So, um, Chance, anyway. He's about this tall. So tall as me, young guy. Well, I don't want to say any names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, it was a it was a really good time, and then we went to Russell County, and uh, we got to see Kenny Newsom. Yeah, got to see Ken. Kenny Newsom. Yeah, Ken. Ken, yeah. Remember Ken? Oh, I saw him not too long ago at a restaurant. Yeah, he's he's been banged up. He's been messed up. Yeah, yeah. Was a bitch out front at uh, Walmart, and he was. Yeah, when I saw him, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah well, God just saved his life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so we got to really encourage him, and then uh, what? Did, what did he say? Did he say is he open to recovery or he, he just he really didn't know what was? I called him last two weeks ago, and he hung up on me and bought my number in like two point one seconds. <laughs> yeah, well, it's probably probably guilt. I mean, yeah, guilt from what? Where he was at. Honestly, when he walked down the steps when he first saw me, I kind of, I kind of felt like he was hiding. Yeah, like he didn't want me to be there because of that. But after opening up the shirt, you know, I came up and gave me a hug. So is this the face? No, I just, I just like was like you could go to Russell County. And he was like, what dorm's Ken in? And they told him, and he just went to that dorm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I, w I wish we could talk a chap about that Yeah. at Muskogee. But yeah. yeah, that'd be cool. I'll mention that. What did they get him for? Dub charges? I don't know. I don't know. But you got him, and yeah. what yeah. did he ask you to tell his dad? <coughs> tell him that he was all right. Okay. And so I called his parents um, when I got in the car, and they were very encouraged. Very encouraged to know that he was doing okay. That means a lot to parents. Yeah. And then I know I knew his parents from uh, one of the churches that I went to. And um, you know he was Ken was with me in the feds, so we we became friends in there. So you knew Ken? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that is crazy. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. he did what six or seven years in the yeah. feds. He was so. he was pretty jacked when he was in there too. I mean, as far as like big, yeah. So was. you knew him, like he knew you. Yeah, I knew, I knew him and his parents. <laughs> yeah, so be amazing. I guess when I got to talk to his parents, they were very encouraged because they know we were there together. And they kind of see where I'm at now. You know, yeah. just, uh, just got to stay focused in the Lord. You know, just stay focused in the Lord. Man. But yeah, it was, it was definitely, I felt like it was a divine appointment. Wow. So yeah. That's pretty... Pretty amazing. So I had a lady call me yesterday, and she, her son, <coughs> seen us come into Russell County before, and she said she had called a bunch of places to try to get him help, and I was the only place that called her back. And they're going to try to, they're going to get a form filled out, and they're the one to send him to the center of hope. Well, I, I noticed that um, we haven't had a lot of people go into the center from the jails. Is it just? I mean, not that we had a lot at Muskogee either, but is it just like people, the guys aren't getting out, they're not calling us back, or it's, are we still taking in apps? I mean, yeah, I think a lot of it is a lot of the guys that we talked to still have a decent amount of time left. So they're just, most of the apps that, got, that have gotten filled out, probably I'd say eight or ten are for a future date. Yeah, and they're on file. Yes. And they are talking about two or three that says specifically that they were denied by the judge to go there. Okay. Wow. A little turbulence, but yeah. 
I know that my judge, when they sent me there, uh, he didn't really have a whole lot of information about it, and he requested that they keep a checkup on and follow up my progress. And I have my sheet now to give to them in Muscogee County to, you know, mm -hmm. to give them an example or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, awesome. Maybe we should, give between our advice. brochure and <coughs> Center of Hope's brochure, kind of get it to the different judges in Muscogee and see if we get us sit down with them and kind of tell them what. Attorneys. Yeah. And she needs it. The DAs, the judges. Get some awareness out of what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe talk to the Center of Hope and see if they can provide data on your. So they have a website. Rate, I mean, success rate on the. We have they have a website. Did we put their website on our pamphlet, or is it just list their name? Okay. It'd be a lot better if they already knew about it. Though. Yeah. They're, they're there, like doing the deal, and the judge is about to send it to the man or whatever, and he knows about the center of I wonder if there's some type of meeting that the chaplain could clue us in on Neil and Muskogee, and that we like the judges meet or DA. I'll ask him about it. <laughs> Another thing also, uh, we seem to have a better success rate for the guys that are coming here and, you know, us do, having follow-up after graduation yeah. and what I've seen other graduates that don't Just have that out. same follow-up yeah. and have that same yeah. support yeah. system. Yeah. So uh, it's really instead of asking the center itself for a success rate, we might need to compile our own success rate because uh, it would be better. Yeah. A lot higher. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we have a, I mean, there's a lot of guys in here that we're still, you know what I'm saying? John still Ray. kicking. Yeah. And we're all, yeah. Praise God. Amen. I remember, yeah, I remember when John Green went. I actually had a memory pop up in my phone when we we prayed for We're John laying Green. hands on him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like three years ago. Well, it's our picture for Able Ministry. I think. Yeah. We're faithful. Where is that JB? He's, he's here. Yeah. He's, he's, he's in the bathroom. Yeah, he was just yeah. right there. He came in with some of that taste of choice, boy. He's right in that gut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, page four. Page four. The top of it, still. I love it. So we're, we're in Romans 5. And one of the things that we've been talking about is just uh, getting to understand the identity of our Father. Know, our Heavenly Father. And we looked at we took a we took a look at Mark chapter four. We looked at that several times. That's probably the cornerstone of uh, Jesus' teaching was the parable of the sower. And in Romans five, we talked about how uh, when tribulations come and persecutions come come for the word's sake. Right? They come for the word's sake. In Mark chapter 4, it kind of breaks it down. It says the sower sows the word. And then it says Satan comes immediately to steal the word. And it even says that tribulation and persecution comes for the word's sake. So the moment we decide as believers, as Christians, to step into, begin to walk in the word and begin to seek after our destiny and our calling, Satan's going to come immediately to steal that word. And you see it in the life of all the apostles. You see it in the life of Jesus. And Jesus is the perfect example. So He steps out. Luke chapter 4, He steps out into ministry. He, he finds Himself in the Word. He, he preaches the prophetic word from Isaiah 61 about the anointing being on Him to set the captives free. He releases His fire word, just His opening sermon. And as soon as He does that, the religious leaders, they lead him to a cliff and they want to throw him off the cliff. They want to kill him. So a lot of us today, you know, I feel like one of the things the Lord showed me is some of the darkest places, not I don't mean evil, but I mean just not walking in wisdom will be in tra tradition and religion, those type of settings and those type of environments. And I believe the Lord has given revealing giving revelation knowledge to a, a generation that's going to begin to go in just like Jesus. Jesus was preaching in the synagogues, but He wasn't preaching the law. 
he was preaching the kingdom. Right? If you go in there and you look, everywhere he preached, it says, and he preached the kingdom. And he preached the kingdom. And he preached the kingdom. And he wasn't preaching his own earthly kingdom. He was preaching the kingdom of God. And when he was asked about the kingdom of God, he says the kingdom of God is within. He says the kingdom of God is without observation. The kingdom of God is within us. Is it tracking? Yeah. Okay. The kingdom of God is within us. Right? So when we begin to seek, the Bible says to do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Amen. So when we begin to seek the kingdom, we can expect tribulation, persecution is coming. And we got to guard our heart. You know, one of the biggest things that the Word talks about as far as guarding your heart from is offense. Right? Offense. Offense will blind you. Offense will blind you. It will, it will mute out God's voice. It offends you from God, right? And it does exactly what it sounds like. It, it creates a fence around you where you literally can't see. It creates a fence of darkness around you where you can't see where you're going. And we have to stay clear of that. You know, and I believe we've got a... Hebrews 12.1 says to keep our eye on who? Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. And it's talking about a race. You know, and if we're not careful... In this race that we're in, everybody has a tailor-made race. If we don't keep our eye on Jesus, we'll start to look left and to the right. And then, next thing you know, the enemy will get us off course. Yeah. Right? The enemy will get us off course. So we got to stay focused on Jesus at all times. Um, what are some things that are helping us do that? I mean, they're common sense, but I just want to go over Yeah, very it. practical. So, yeah. stay in the Word. I think because Jesus in the beginning was with God and the Word was God and the Word became flesh. So we know that the Word of God is this is Jesus, right? Faith comes by hearing. Yeah, faith comes yeah. by hearing. So staying in this Word will really teach you how to not just see God correctly, but also see yourself correctly. And when you see yourself correctly, you're going to see your brothers correctly. And you're not going to be offended. Right. What I've also seen is the more I learn of God's Word, the Holy Spirit will quicken that part. Yes. Like in a time where, oh, should I do this or do that? Well, it's what the Word of God says. Yeah, it's, here it is. Don't forget, yeah. you know, this is what you read last week or, you know, whatever. And it's just, you got to have it in you. Amen. You, know, you got to get it in you at some point. It's crazy. It's kind of reminds me, like when you look on a computer screen or in your phone and you uh, take your finger and you grab the app and you scroll it down. Every good. time you let it go, Shoots it right back, you know what I'm saying? It just reminds me that's the word of God, you know what I'm saying? You let it go, shoot right back to the word. Your mind is always shoot back to yeah. the word. I love how the word is uh, the sword. You know? Yeah. It's like the sword is yeah. is not it's not something that you just pick up and you just hey, I am good with this. You've got to train with this. Right. And like the only thing that was going through my mind on you Sunday when, when that man was berating me in front of my son was just like the words started popping to my head mm. I'm like man I've got to act on this word that's coming up here yeah. instead of getting in my feelings yeah. mm -hmm. I can't have this separate me and how I should react you know mm -hmm. we got to operate from the inside out right we can't let our emotions and flesh rule us because if we do we'll be yeah. calling Josh hey man I need you to come <laughs> You come get me, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, we need to operate from the inside out. We need to we need to have that word. That's why the enemy is vying for our time. You know, he doesn't want us to read our Bible. He doesn't want us to read our books, book assignments. Why? Because those are going to help us grow in the knowledge of not just Jesus, but the knowledge of ourselves. You know, because we're created in His image. You know, we just need to get that word on the inside of us and really focus on our own walk. So, getting in the word. And the Bible says, and, and Dustin talked about this in his speech that he gave at the center, it's not about just getting this Word, reading the Word, but it's about what? Doing. Doing the Word. Right. Doing it. If so-and-so is not doing it, I don't care. <laughs> right. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Like, when we stand before Jesus Christ at the judgment seat of Christ, they are not going to be there. <laughs> your wife's not going to be there. Your daddy's not going to be there. Your mama's not going to be there. 
That's why it says work out your own salvation. I can't worry about what the next man is doing. I'm going to pray for the next man. Right? Right. Pray for the next man. We were talking about, Blake brought up Job yesterday and how in the Old Testament how he was had access to the throne of God. And I said, well, he doesn't. After the cross, he lost that access. He can't go before God's throne like that anymore. Adam gave him that access before the throne. And when Jesus came back and took the keys, now the accuser of the brethren, guess who he works through? Works through us. Get us going around pointing the finger. So and so did this. So and so did that. And we become that accuser of the brethren. We don't. Isaiah 58 talks about that. We don't. We don't need to do that. <laughs> but um. You know, getting in the Word. Uh, Being at the right place at the right time. Yeah. And and watch Jesus' example in the Word, in the Gospels. Jesus said, if you see Me, you've seen the Father. You can begin to understand how the Father operated when He was on this earth. He was plugged in. Yes. He went to the secret place. As was His custom, He went to the synagogue. He was about His Father's business. Yeah. He yeah. only said what he heard the Father say. Yeah, yeah. He only did what he saw him do. Yeah, yeah. And he says, if you he abide in me, you'll walk just like me. He walked in love. He walked in mercy. He walked in forgiveness. He also, you know, he did what God told him to do. And I think if we really want to step into what God has for us, man, do what he says. That was the last thing that, that was the last thing that Mary said. Whatever he says, do. <laughs> that was the last thing Mary said. But uh, yeah, that's, you know, just getting practical with it. Just follow follow his example. Paul said to follow me as I what? Follow Christ. Follow Christ. Christ. Right? If I'm not following Christ in my actions, words, and deeds, then don't don't follow me. You know? As a matter of fact, check me on it. Say, brother, pull me off to the side and say, you need to tighten up in this area. And I'll say, Amen. Amen. I think what am I gonna say? You know. But uh all right, so persecution comes for the word's sake. So the moment we decide, here's where a lot of people get get messed up. The moment we decide to follow Jesus instead of our destiny and purpose, and that tribulation and persecution comes, it catches a lot of people off guard because they automatically think that now that I'm in Christ, I'm not going to have any problems. And the Bible doesn't say that, right? But the Bible does say that He's our very present help in time of need. God gives us His Word. Right? So when those, those trials and tribulations come, we spend the time in the Word, studying the Word, becoming the Word, then that Word can just pop up like Dustin was saying, come down and then it goes back. You know, it, just, it stays within us. And we're able to draw on it whenever we need it. Right? And then the Word is what's going to give us increase in our life. The Word gives us increase. And we talked about that. If the tribulation is what caused us to increase and everybody in the world would be a spiritual giant. Because everybody in the world experiences pressure every single day. Right? You got a lot of people in, in mental hospitals, you got a lot of people dealing with depression, anxiety, all these different things. And why? Because when the pressure comes, they succumb to the pressure, they yield to the pressure, and they don't turn to the Word. Right? If you yield to the pressure, if you yield to the trial, if you yield to the test, it's designed to crush you. Pressure breaks pipes. But if you release that word, if you release that word inside of that test and that trial, man, it'll cause you to grow. The word of God, the Holy Spirit, will cause you to expand. You'll expand in joy. You'll expand in peace. You'll expand in patience. When you put that to work, that fruit to work, it'll begin to grow. I want to look at uh, James chapter one. James chapter 1. <clears throat> James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Right? So they were going through they were going through some stuff. Why were they going through some stuff? Persecution comes for what? The Word's sake. Man, they were establishing the church. 
pressure comes up, the heat's turned up when you start trying to, especially back here when, when they were establishing the early church, there was a lot of persecution. I mean, a lot. We don't know how good we have it here. <laughs> Seriously. Verse 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And it literally means, this is a picture right here of being surrounded. Surrounded on every side. Right? And the Bible says to what? Count it all joy. There's that word again. You're in, you're surrounded by trials. Then what do you do? He who sits in the heavens, what? Laughs. You laugh. Why? Because you know that the victory's already been won. He always causes us to triumph. Jesus already came. He defeated the world, the flesh, and the devil. He sat down. We're seated in Him. And He calls us more than conquerors, right? We already have the victory. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from the victory. The victory's already been won. All we have to do is rest in the fact of knowing that Jesus has already won this battle and He's given us everything that we need to make it through, whatever the test is. So really, counting the joy is just like Praising Him in the storm. You know, and we talked about the eagle. Praising Him in the storm is like rising up. It's like just Isaiah says, you know, rise up with wings as eagles. What, is it, what does an eagle do? It rises above the storm. It doesn't allow the storm to crush you, right? But you dominate the storm. And it, it makes me think about, we talked about this yesterday, the three Hebrew boys, right? The three Hebrew boys... They were in a fire. They were going through a fire, a trial. And what happened? They came out and they didn't even smell like smoke. <laughs> and there was somebody else in the fire with them, wasn't it? Jesus. 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 Is, there. He looks like the Son of he God. He looks like the Son of God. <laughs> yeah. So whatever we go through, guess what? He's in us. <laughs> Jesus is in us. He doesn't have to come down off the throne and come down. No, Holy Spirit is already in us. The Holy Spirit is already in us. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. In the King James, it says the same thing that we talked about in the last text. It talks about, in uh, Romans 5, it talks about putting patience to work. Right? We have to employ patience when we're going through a trial. We have to employ patience. And when we employ patience, we begin to grow in that area. Let patience have its perfect work that you might be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. See, as we go through a trial, we go through tests, and we put patience, we employ patience, we put it to work, guess what? It'll begin to mature us. The Word of God will begin to mature us. The Holy Spirit will begin to mature us. And then next thing you know, you find yourself, things that used to bother you, Trials and tests, things that you're going through, they don't they don't bother they don't bother you like they used to. And it gets better and better and better as you grow. Verse five If any if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach, and it will be given to him. So what kind of wisdom is he talking about right here? He's talking about wisdom during a trial or test. Right? All hell's breaking loose all around you. And you ask God, God, I need a word. I need a word. I need some wisdom. Because we last time we met, we read about God always makes a way of escape. What's the way of escape? His word. His word. That's why we got to have that relationship. You know, staying in fellowship with our prayer life and reading the word and fellowship. So we ask for wisdom, and the Bible says He'll what? Give it to us. Give it to us. Freely. Never say, I, I can't hear God's voice. Never say, God, don't speak to me. That's not Bible. We just gotta, we've just got we got to learn how to, to tweak it and get to a place where we can receive from God's Word. Now, so, sometimes we don't, yeah. we don't want the answer. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Oh, Lord, I'm struggling in this relationship. This woman is this and this and this. You ain't even supposed to be in that relationship. You're not married. You're having sex. You know, like, we don't want to hear the answer. You know, there's. I've been there, and like I, uh, of course, not not there. Praise God, I've been I've been married, but I've been you know angry or offended. 
was a baby. And I'm like, Lord, this, this, and this. And he's like, whoa, whoa, it's you. It's you. God, you don't want to hear. So that's sometimes we don't pray and ask for wisdom because we already, really, we already know what the Word is. Yeah. Hey, correct your spirit. So you also have to, you have to take the step to calm your mind sometimes. You, you have all this daily activity going on. All the things and the worries. You've got to, you've got to learn how to be still and, and find center with God. And when you when it says you go off to to the secret place, I mean, he, he, you're intentional with Him. He's going to be intentional with you. That's he's right. going to cause peace to come over you. That's right. All these things circling around in your head, man, He's He's going to help you calm it so that you can hear Him. You can hear His voice. So He wants you to be grounded. Yeah. Right. So, like, I heard Him the best being at the center. He'd be loud at the door and have you up to the sanctuary to pray and stuff. And it was a lot easier when they didn't have gym going on at the same time because the gym was, like, right there. JV was in there, eh. <laughs> and, you know, man, they sure are loud in there. And uh, do one more, do you know what I'm saying? I'm just in there trying to pray. But uh, really, it was because of after the fact. Now it's a family. Both of my kids are super loud. I don't know why. They have to holler. It just echoes through the house. But you know, that's where what Jeff is saying. You have to get into the secret place where it's just you and him. Yeah. You know, where it's quiet, where you can make your mind still and, and really listen. Yeah. And it, it, man, out of that. Revelation will come out of that. You know, a lot of things come. Yeah. We reveal things to you up to come and answers to the problems that you're facing now. Yeah. I think for me, my best time, I know I've said this before, is in the night. You know, three, four in the morning, two in the morning. The, the Holy Spirit will just wake me up and it's just so peaceful, it's so quiet. And uh, it's not about me doing all the talking, it's about just sitting there and being still. And, yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, the last couple days, because I've been trying to get in this book, you know, and, but I haven't had the time at home. So what I've been doing, that cul-de-sac, that Ken Key in, in my neighborhood, I've been driving down there and posting up. Nobody lives back there is working by the time I'm home, but just been posting up, just taking a few minutes just to, you know, pray, get that rest, read the book a little bit. Because <coughs> so, I can't find that time at home for sure. With yeah. All yeah, once I get to the house, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. Gotta get up a little bit earlier. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Steph, all night. I was reading. Did you start that book yet? No. Nah. So I was reading in the beginning. It talks about it's Ken, Ken Hagen's son. <coughs> Ken Hagen, and he said when he was a boy, he said sometimes he would go to bed at night and his dad would be sitting at the table and he'd have all his Bibles out reading and studying and he said he would wake up in the morning and he'd still be sitting there. Man, yeah. But he was just like, you going to be alright today, Daddy? And he's like, yeah. He's like, my Jesus can give me the strength. Of course, I'm not saying step all night. I mean, this guy was like full-time ministry and I'm sure that wasn't every night, but from time to time he would just really press in. you know. But I, I believe that, that. I said that to say this. I believe that on the nights that he does have us stay up, there is grace there. There's grace. There's ability. Um, you know, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is is working inside of us. And I think we have to have, gra- have we have to have faith for that grace, right? We don't want to say, "Well, I, I, the Lord had me up this morning, and now I'm too tired to work." No, that that's, that's not an excuse. Mm. You know, I feel like you know, driving for driving for FedEx. You guys don't like that either. Driving for FedEx all those years, I had the 13-hour days. I had to tap into that grace. I couldn't do it in my own strength. Because there were nights where I stayed up and studied. There were nights that I stayed up and prayed. There were nights that the kids were up all night. You know, sometimes all of them. All of them get sick at the same time. And, you know, it's just... Once one of them starts crying. Yeah. So, anyway, just grace for the season. You know, God will give you grace. He'll give you a tailor-made season, and then He'll give you grace for that season. Right? So let's just read down a couple more verses. I really want to go down um, all the way to Revelation, but we'll we'll get there later. Okay, let's go. But let him let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. 
So the Message Bible talks about don't have a plan B. Mm. Like when you ask God for wisdom, don't have, you know, asking faith, don't have a plan B. Really brought this out to me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Like God's plan A. That's yeah. it. Because if you have a plan, plan B, side, that means you don't, don't have. You don't believe. You're not believing. Yeah. Try yeah. plan A through X, and you know, you get to the point where he's plan Z or whatever. Yeah. You know, I already tried everything, Lord. I really need you to do. This. You could skip a lot of you know, back to the drawing board. So, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think what messes a lot of us up is when we mm-hmm. allow our emotions to become our voice. Yeah. yeah. Not talking about renewed emotions, I'm talking about unrenewed emotions. Anger. Anger, yeah. yeah. Stress. Yeah. Stress, yeah. anxiety. You know, it can even be lust. You know, yeah. God's, God's telling us something about a relationship. And he's saying, cut this relationship off, but hormones start moving around and testosterone and, you know, our voice becomes God's voice. You know, the Bible talks about our conscience becoming seared with a hot iron. And basically it's saying, God's saying, I've been trying to talk to you. I've been giving you my word. I've been giving you a word. And you just keep ignoring it. It just gets to a point where that his voice becomes silent. I mean, there's some things you don't need to pray about. Yeah. It's right there. Like, should I do this? No! You don't need to hear some mystical angel come down and tell you yes or no. It's black and white. Don't thou shall not do this. Like, don't do it. Yeah. It's That's what the plan B like. Don't, right. don't have a plan B. Right. This is it. And the Bible also says, in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Right, so you always need to have two or three brothers that are holding you accountable, spiritually, spiritually mature, walking in the Lord, and hopefully they'll take you to the Word. <laughs> well, this is how I feel. Well, you know, yeah, this is the Word, black and white. Yes, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do what I say, and I'll manifest myself to you. If you need a miracle, do what I say. And that work isn't that work in all you know. You turn it off. All walks of life. Hey, I need a paycheck. 